It's been a while since I did any dog movies, especially from the Dove Foundation. So let's fix that and look at one. It's not Agent Cody Banks, but Agent Toby Barks. This is a film brought to us by Grindstone Entertainment Group. And if you haven't heard of them, well, neither have I. Apparently they were around at least before 2009 and have made films of different genres. It seems they shifted into making films that the Dove Foundation would approve of. After all, no matter how bad it is, it's good enough for them so long as it sounds superficially Christian. This movie is brought to us by Dan Hunter, who wrote and directed... Uh, this. IMDb doesn't list anything else, and googling this guy's name brings up other people. Still, I guess Grindstone was willing to give this guy a shot at making a children's movie about a dog. And you gotta start somewhere. And they seem to believe in Hunter enough to get Dean Kane and John Lovitz to build this. So let's see how well he did. Right away, we see a bit of a filming goof. We first see a dog coming out of his house, but then, after cutting to these two teens, they just have the dog come back inside. I guess they want the kids to be the focus instead? But they seem disinterested. Like their father! Pass your driver's test tomorrow, and then you could drive a real car. Wouldn't that be something? This is kind of like practice, Dad. Oh. Well, then this wouldn't be con confusing or distracting. Come on, Dad. Is this a problem for you? Dad. I'm so sorry. You're gonna make me crash. I'm a pedestrian! I'm a pedestrian! Look out! Don't hit the pedestrians! Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. What happened to you, Dean Kane? You used to play Superman for crying out loud! I don't know what game he was playing, but I do know one thing. It was probably just a video clip. So far, I don't really see the Agent Cody Banks comparisons. It looks more like a cats and dogs ripoff even down to using lip flaps to allow the animals to talk. The only major difference is that Toby, voiced by John Lovitz, is working for humans. So, like, spymate then. Agent Prescott will brief you at the mobile command unit. Roger. Gear up and meet at the extraction point. Better get my tail moving. Oi, let's watch the lip sync, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so apparently the collar allows Toby to talk. Must have been from whatever branch of the government he works for. In this story, he's working with other agents, and their objective is to stop the alliteratively named Horace the Horrible. Brent Azer, what are you doing here? He's hired rogue hackers to spread a virus within the American banking system. His ultimate plan is to shut down Wall Street, creating an economic downswing worse than the Great Depression. Yeah, well, he's a little late on that. The orange one beat him to it. And speaking of children, this film really likes to pander to its youngest demographic. With a pack of very mean, very dedicated bodyguards. Activate stink canister. It stinks! Ray Ray, remember the vault job in Rhode Island? That's peanuts to this! Yeah. We're getting paid, boys! Yeah. Double D! Crawling joke? This is the big job! We will destroy Wall Street! Yeah. The markets will crash! Yeah. If he keeps this up, he's going to inadvertently summon the ultimate warrior and get his ass handed to him! Meanwhile, Toby sneaks into the base while none of the bad guys bat an eyelid. But to be fair, just finding warm bodies to staff the compound is a minor miracle. And I know we're not in a good economy right now, but you couldn't even afford guns for these guys? What is this? I don't know. There's a little going away present, fellas. Now who will the horror maniacs root for at SummerSlam, brother? So the good guys celebrate. I mean, I think they're the good guys. I still don't have a clue on who most of them are. But whatever. Toby goes back home and we have another villain plot. That dog is one of a kind. 
Wouldn't the world be a happier place if there were a million others just like him? Did I mention I'm not a villain? We learned that the Dean Cain character is in a pickle. He's had to raise the family by himself after his wife passed away. But he's also taking a fishing trip with his boss to secure a promotion. He gets his science major sister to watch over his kids. But she has her own problems as she's getting pestered by Agent Lane, played by Fred Sullivan. Not sure which one, and not like it matters. This totally not bad guy really wants access to our super secret plans for, you know, riches. Later, after arriving at the household, she has a talk with Toby about his responsibilities. The kids cannot know about what we do. If they were to ever find out, we'd be putting them in incredible danger. Agreed. I mean, he probably already knew this, but we had to remind the audience because they're as dumb as rocks. We then cut to one of the kids, Brett, who lies about passing his driver's test. And here is where we get into a PSA about not lying. It's like they want to make these characters likable, but it feels like they're playing it too safe and with the same emotion as the doggone movies. Meanwhile, Lane again tries to convince Ani B to leave him the plants to Toby's collar for $20 million and a spot in his future company. The possibilities are endless for this invention! And the marketing, the social media, the interactive games. We've got a gold mine! But I didn't invent the B link to cash in. I invented it to help people. Well, it could still help people. Only in a different way. Not a chance. Well, I don't think you understand. You know, why don't we pretend that this is all a big joke and act like it never happened, hmm? Otherwise, I'm gonna report you so fast that your tie will spin right off your shirt collar. Jesus, Lane! Your barter skill isn't just zero, it's firmly in negative territory. You didn't just fail to get what you want, but you kinda give away the fact that you are up to no good. You're only lucky Ani B didn't tell anyone anyway, because this is definitely quid pro quo. Meanwhile, Dean Kane and his friend are about to go fishing with their boss. I'm glad you boys could make it. You know there's a legendary fish in this lake? If Nessie somehow shows up in this movie, I'm outta here. Looks like Ani B is looking to be acting like old Uncle Q. Alright, take a good chew. <laughs> Yeah, one good bite, and it's lights out for 30 seconds. It cuts the power and stops any signal of any kind. Snap into that bad boy, and everything within a 100-foot radius goes back to the Stone Ages. So, how come Toby's collar still works? But the real issue with this movie comes from characters dinging around, waiting for the next plot point to happen. This movie's only an hour and 20 minutes. Yet it's nothing but filler since Toby took down Horace. It's like, do something with your spy theme, movie! I don't want to have to keep bringing in Deadpool to tell how boring this is. He's charging me every time I use that cliff, and my gold reserves aren't exactly overflowing these days. The kids then learn that Ani B is an inventor. She has a microwave robot thing that makes a complete breakfast. And now she's giving Brett driving lessons. Um, what was the title of this movie again? Even Robodog Airborne managed to keep it about the dog, even if it was mostly on the ground. Naturally, Agent Lane is trying to hack into the system so he can steal Bees' research. One wonders why he isn't just doing that from the very start, but he also needs to prove again that he's the movie's bad guy. So he plays the part while looking for someone to neutralize Toby. Bullies, charming sociopaths. Cheaters, crackpots, creeps, crooks, deranged psychopaths, ah -ha, dangerous maniacs. And there he is, Sonny Wolf. <laughs> Takes a big bad wolf to catch a chatty little dog. <laughs> wolf here. Hello there, Mr. Wolf. Uh, this is Benedict and Lane from Lane Technologies. And I have a rather lucrative offer for you, sir, for a man of your specific skill set. Specific skill set, huh? 
What, is he gonna suplex the dog? Oh, come on, you're just replaying the same exact video game clip from the start of the movie. So I guess Sunny Wolf and Slamderella, I think that's who she is, show up to kidnap Toby and Ani B. Lane certainly picked the best. He's not even biting you, you wimp. Anyway, all it takes is for Slanderella to drop rope on Toby, and he's all caught. The kids attempt to call 911, but the villains toss the EMP ball that's supposed to momentarily knock out all the power in the immediate area. The phone won't work. But sir, we can't keep filming if the EMP knocks out the lights. We won't be able to eliminate our characters! Then keep those lights on and start rolling! We're on a tight schedule! And it's not like our audience is smart enough to know how an EMP works! Toby manages to free himself, so the bad guys are forced to only take Ani B. The kids spot Toby going into the shed and attempt to follow him. That's when they learn that their dog can talk. Toby? Uh, uh, hi guys. Toby, are you talking? No, I, I'm just, I then yes. Ani B gets smashed in the middle of the night, thrown into a van, our dog is talking to us, and we're in the middle of some kind of, I don't know, secret base? Is this a secret base? It's the Bark Cave. Right, the Bark Cave. Makes sense. I know what this is. We're still sleeping. This is a dream. I, I'm dreaming. Somehow that's more emotion than the kids ever had in the Dog Gone movies. I'm not just your dog. I'm a highly trained government agent. Your Auntie B and I work for a top secret organization. You gotta be kidding me. So you're like a double o doggy? Will you just listen? We're running out of time. Auntie B invented some real game changing gadgets, and someone must be after her. Who do you think it is? Well, only a few people know where to find Auntie B this weekend. Sadly, they all work for the agency. So that means? That means someone from the inside double crossed us. Computer. Locate van, make, and model. Toby doesn't want the kids to endanger themselves from helping him, but is later forced to accept their help when they threaten to tell their dad about it. Which means Brett has to take the driving lessons B gave him and follow that scent. So far, so good, but why are they driving on the left side of the road instead of the right? Actually, looking back at earlier footage, and then footage further ahead, the cars are driving the way we would in the States, on the right-hand side. So, why did they mirror this scene? Why does the movie make them drive on the left-hand side in some shots, then on the right in others? Space is warped and time is bendable. Then, for some reason, the cops pull him over. Guess they thought they were the speeding van earlier. Toby helps the kids shake loose the officer by speaking to him. The cop loses his mind because talking dog. They find the place where B was taken to, and of course, the kids have to stay behind. Meanwhile, Lane tries adding more ham into the sandwich. I came to you, and I offered you a deal. And you gave me a flat no, not knowing that I'm the kind of guy you never say no to. My mother used to call me tenacious. She called me solipsistic, too. That was when I was six and Mr. Smarty Pants when I was 27. But I'll show you, Mommy! You'll never get away with this, Lane. Oh, won't I? Is that your expert opinion? I think I already have! <laughs> Look, I like over-the-top acting, but something about this feels a bit unearned. Like he's trying really hard to sell it, and it's not doing it for me. Neither is this dumb dialogue. You're Hey, someone give her a scholarship to Harvard Law School! Anyway, Toby gets found out because Sonny's dog barked out his location. Not like it matters, since our hero gets away and even uses a sleeping pellet to knock out the henchmen. Rather than chase the intruders, Lane just says to strengthen security. Yeah, it's not like these kids are gonna go to a nearby phone booth to call the cops or anyone else who might have the power to stop us. They're a fourth quarter problem, and we'll bomb that bridge when we get there. And I'm guessing his experiment doesn't just include dogs, as he has all sorts of potential spy animals. I guess even with all those scientists, 
They couldn't work the device on any of them. Well, they are successful in terms of one animal. Ew, humans, gross. Please give me my space. You there, Fathead, what's for lunch? Fathead, 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 I'm talking to you. <laughs> Admittingly, that was kind of funny. Lane orders Ani B to recreate the B link for him, or else he'll do something to her niece and nephew. Not sure how credible the threat is, given that Toby can go to the agency for help, but she creates another collar for that other dog, Angus. Activate. B-Link. Hey, boss. What can I do for you? <laughs> my baby! He spoke to me! We did it! Oh, we did. Ugh, someone give this man a bottle. Anyway, the heroes come back with help and they begin the infiltration. Oh, and what a shock. The bad guys never intended to let Ani B go. Anyway, how will these three bozos go down? Sure. And wow, these Nobel Prize winning scientists, or so Lane claimed, are bad at destroying evidence. Even for a kid's film, this feels like talk down nonsense. But can they at least deter children? Football team, the Ladybugs, and we're going door to door asking local businesses for sponsorships. You know what? I love softball too. I do, I do. Hold on. Come out of here, cheapskate. Pony up a few bucks for the kids. For their softball team. <sighs> Just 15 more minutes, I can survive this. And also, wasn't Dean Cain supposed to be in this movie? What the hell happened with him? And I guess Angus just really enjoys being a bad dog, which means he's going to heaven. So how's Toby getting out of this one? Angus, get him! Anyway, he reaches B, but they get surrounded. So it's up to the humans to save the day by using the weapon B made. The crossbone. Walter from Spies in Disguise had more creative gadgets than this. But what a shock, Lane is unaffected and he proceeds to steal Toby's collar. But when he gets backed into a corner, he starts chowing down on gum. It looks like he's setting up a gum wall to protect himself, only to get frozen by B's liquid nitrogen device before he gets far. How anticlimactic. The family and Toby reunite after the fight. Dean Kane finally uses the gummy worms his daughter gave him for luck and they actually help his boss catch a red Gyarados. Or some other legendary fish. Whatever, he's getting promoted. He too learns later that his dog can talk, and along with Toby, the kids are getting awarded for stopping the bad guys. Even though Toby didn't really do much in the finale, Ani B did most of the work, so where's her medal? Wow, who knew that this Christian movie had a secret theme about a highly talented and accomplished woman not getting the credit she deserved? Well, agents, you know what that means. Well, what, what does that mean? Looks like our next mission. Agent Barks, you take the lead. Yes, sir. Agents, out up! Well, that was idiotic. Off to hang myself. Off and left. God damn, that was bad. Compared to other low-budget films, this one at least had better effect usage, but everything else was just really grating to sit through. The writing is poor, the action is lame, and the climax is non-existent. The actors fossilate between total indifference to scenery chewing, all while talking down to its audience like a Fox News anchor. Sure, I've been through the same experience while covering other films, but this felt worse because they had a couple of noteworthy actors who I know can do better. So are there any silver linings? Um, at least they didn't give us an evil talking cat. Just an evil talking dog? Nah, even that was done poorly. 
Honestly, there isn't much else I can say about this film. You're better off just watching Cats and Dogs. That's how bad it is. I'm the Media Hunter. Media's my prey, and reviewing them my way.